Did you know that artificial intelligence can now help you to diagnose your patients in real time whilst you're consulting with them? In today's episode of Dr. Noor, I take you through the features of Diagnosis Pad which help you to do exactly that. Did you know that about 10% of general practitioners use some form of artificial intelligence in their consultations today? In most situations, this takes the place of an AI scribe, meaning this is a program that has listened to the patient-doctor conversation and it transcribes this into notes to be shared onto the patient's file. However, with all of these programs, it does require the cloud processing, meaning that the information from the patient, including the audio recordings, are uploaded onto the cloud for processing. The main issue today with these, as you can imagine, is security. Cyber hacking is a lucrative business, especially for healthcare data. The problem is that once one system is compromised, everybody else is compromised as well, opening up personal and sensitive data to hackers that may be used in inappropriate ways. Diagnosis Pad is an application that uses artificial intelligence, which has no cloud processing, meaning that it can work offline and in private. This means that the security risk is far reduced, helping to keep your patient's information private and offline. DiagnosisPad has a number of features which I'll run through today, some of which include transcriptions, note-taking, and it can also help you in real time diagnose your patient, giving you recommendations on questions to ask to further find the best possible outcome for your patient. DiagnosisPad is the first application of its kind to help you to diagnose your patient and it does this all offline. It does this by using ambient audio, meaning that it has a listen to the conversation between you and your patient. It takes this information and produces a transcript sentence by sentence. It feeds us into the on-device artificial intelligence. This then generates a list of recommended questions that you may want to ask your patients and also the three top differential diagnoses. If you're not too sure what a diagnosis is, you can click on this diagnosis and you'll be presented with a medical terminology database at your fingertips. Not only does it tell you what the diagnosis is, but it also tells you why it's come up with that particular diagnosis, meaning that it's context aware according to the conversation that you've had with your patient. All of these features help you as a practitioner have an improved patient outcome. A patient can be used in two ways. One, it can be used as a symptom checker. For example, imagine that you're a practitioner and you're not too sure what the symptoms stack up to. Let's take a look at a quick example. Three-year-old child with a left ear infection, muffled hearing, and some discharge from the ear with some fever. We'll pause the session and we'll see what the AI comes up with in real time. So immediately it's provided me with a diagnosis of an acute otitis externa, otitis media with effusion, or a superative mastoiditis or meningitis as the lowest probability. As I've only given it a few bits of information, it's provided me with some further recommendations that I should be asking my patient. For example, it's asking me, has this child experienced any recent ear pain or discomfort? When did he first notice changes in the hearing? And does the child show any signs of fever recently? How high was it? It's also then provided me with a transcript that I've spoken with, and it's provided me with a summary of the notes that I can then upload into the patient's file. So that's one way of using diagnosis pad as a symptom checker. The other way that it can be used is during your consultations with your patient, and I'll be showing an in-depth example of this very shortly. As you can see, the application runs in real time, giving you really quick information whilst you're with your patient. If, for example, you're not sure about a particular diagnosis, you can easily click on the diagnosis itself and you'll actually come up with a medical terminology database at your fingertips. But more intelligent than this, it will actually provide you with a contextually aware explanation. So not only will it tell you what the diagnosis is, but it also tell you why it's chosen this particular diagnosis. So let's take the example of the acute otitis externa. It's told me that it's a common ear infection in young children, particularly those under five. In your given case involving a three-year-old child with symptoms like muffled hearing on one side and discharge from the left ear with fever, this aligns closely with acute otitis externa. The same gone on to tell me what are the causes of an acute otitis externa and the symptoms and the diagnosis and treatment recommendations as well. So as you can see, you have an intelligent medical terminology database at your fingertips. This type of software would be beneficial for all healthcare practitioners. It will benefit those who work rurally, those who have limited internet connectivity because this does not require internet connectivity once it has been downloaded, but it also will benefit those who have limited support from their colleagues and they need someone to ask or they need some extra help or guidance. It can also be used for triage purposes, for example, with nursing staff or the administrative team. They may take a preliminary set of symptoms and they can find out how best to book them in to your consultation. Additionally, it can also be used by medical students who may need to learn for their oral examinations. To date, Diagnosis Pad has been presented in industry-led conferences, including the Royal Australian College of General Practitioners. The application itself is free to download with some features requiring an upgraded subscription. Once you have downloaded it, the application does work offline, meaning that no internet connectivity is 
required for its use. This means that there is no upload of your data to the cloud or if your data occurs on your personal device. Let's now take you through a step-by-step -step guide of how to use Diagnosis Pad in your clinical practice. Once we start a new session, we can then press the button on the bottom, which will then start to listen to our conversation. So let's now take a case where a doctor and a patient are talking together. Hello, doctor. Hello. I've had this headache for about three days now. It's been present on my right side and it's a really throbbing sensation. I feel a little bit nauseous with my headache. And sometimes when I look at the light as well, it makes me feel a little bit sensitive. So I'm going to pause this session and take a look at what it's done so far. As it's processing, it's told me a few recommended questions that I may want to ask my patient. In addition to this, in real time, it's provided me with the top three differential diagnoses that my patient may have. Let's take a look at the recommended questions that it's prompting me to ask the patient. A detailed history of the headache, including the duration and any changes in severity or location over time. Inquire about any other symptoms such as dizziness, vision problems, neck pain, tightness, fever, head trauma, surgery and illnesses. It's also then asked me to do a physical examination, which naturally as a practitioner you would do all of these things. Now of course I'm alluding to a migraine for my patient, but let's take a look at what Diagnosis Pad has come up with. As a number one diagnosis, it's given me an 80% chance or probability that the diagnosis is a migraine. Number two, it's recommended that potentially this could be a tension headache. And the third differential diagnosis is that it could be sinusitis or attention headache due to light sensitivity. So there you have in real time, it's ADG with a diagnosis and some recommended questions that you may want to ask your patient if, for example, you've forgotten one or two questions. On the bottom, you can see that there is a transcript. This is the transcript that my patient and I have had during our conversation. And on the left of the screen, there is a note summary. This is a summary of the medical pointers that you'll be putting into the patient's file. Now, just say, for example, I'm not too sure or I can't remember what a migraine is. I'm going to click on the diagnosis and I'm going to wait for it to come up with its medical terminology database to tell me what the migraine is or what a migraine is. It's also then directing me to references that I might want to use online. Now, these are reputable websites where you can get more information on the condition itself. So let's take a look at its description of what a migraine is. It says, your recent diagnosis indicates that the primary symptom is a migraine headache. Migraines are one of the most common neurological disorders affecting approximately 12 to 18% of adults in their lifetime. And further down, it says, the symptoms you've described, the persistent right side throbbing pain, along with nausea, are all common features of a migraine. So it's told me what a migraine is, but it's also told me why it's chosen this particular diagnosis for my patient. It has also then gone into more detail about the different types of migraine that one may have and also treatment options that can be used. So this will be a really good use, for example, if you're not too sure, if you need to brushing up on your knowledge, because at the end of the day, medical practitioners are expected to know everything, but sometimes the way we learn is by seeing things for the first time. Okay, so let's go back. Now let's have a look at our notes. Say, for example, I want to upload those notes onto my patient's file. I will then go over to the upload button on the top right and I can share this. So these are my notes, my diagnosis and recommendations and the transcript. Once I've shared this by clicking on the top right, and this could be through AirDrop, through email, or just through saving it to your patient's file, I can then edit those notes as I wish. For example, I may wish to take out the transcript or I may wish to add on extra notes if required. You can then resume the session if, for example, your patient wants to say something else, or you may save the session if wished. And you can do this by clicking on the bottom left toggle. Joe blogs. I will then remember that this belongs to Joe blogs. Now let's just say I want to go back and see Joe blogs' session later on during my clinical day. I can click on the top left bullet points and it'll come up with the sessions. And it'll give me information of all of the previous sessions that I've had, including Joe Bloggs. Now, as you can see, the application has worked in real time. And I must also reiterate that it works completely offline. So that means that all of the information of your patient is local on your device. There has been no cloud processing and no uploading of any transcripts or audio recordings onto the cloud. So as you can see, Diagnosis Pad is fairly intuitive to use. It provides you with the ability to have listened to your conversation using ambient audio, but it doesn't use any internet connectivity, meaning that your information is private and offline, which is exactly how sensitive healthcare information should be handled. It also provides you with real-time help with recommendations and questions that you may wish to ask your patient. And it also provides you with the top three differential diagnoses for your patient's presenting complaint. If you would like to try Diagnosis Pad, you can download it from diagnosispad.com and I hope that you'll find that it's useful in your clinical practice. And if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to drop me a line in the comment section below and I'll see you on the next one. Take care and stay healthy.